formula in times you are like a little baby i would say good morning fellow mathematicians welcome back to another video today we are going to deal with two very interesting classes of integrals today one being the cosine to the nth power of x from zero to pi and the next one is going to be the same thing, just with a sign right here. And you might say, no, no. <laughs> reduction formula in times. You are like a little baby, I would say. Um, that's what the meme men would actually say. We are like pussies, we are adults now. And we have introduced something really cool recently so yeah we are going to dive right in so at first um, i would like to do some casework so there are actually two cases that could apply for n it could be either even or odd we don't want to talk about fractional ends today and if i'm no it shouldn't work for negative n it shouldn't work i'm not certain can tell you my boys i'm not certain if this holds for negative n we're just going to say that we are doing this for natural n okay two cases odd and even and at first i would like to introduce a simple substitution to turn this into a symmetric integral because symmetric integrals over periodic functions is pretty nice to deal with so we are going to do this how can we get a symmetric integral well we would like to have up and lower bounds from negative pi to pi respectively so yeah why not introduce a substitution that lets us do this so how can we get to negative pi over 2 well we are going to take x and subtract pi over 2 from it and same spiel up here to get to pi over 2 so let t be equal to x minus pi over 2 meaning dt is nothing but dx that's the cool thing like I said, we are going to arrive at the symmetric integral, symmetric integral of the cosine to the nth power of, okay, solving for x leaves us with t plus pi over 2 dt in this case, not dx. Now what the hell is the cosine of t plus pi over 2? We can put it like this to the nth power. Let us take a look what the cosine of t plus pi over 2 actually is. In normal case, cosine would look something like this. On our interval, okay, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> On our new interval. Now, what happens if we shift our cosine pi over 2 units to which side? Well, if there's a positive sign, we have to switch it negative pi over 2. Leaving us with the negative sign. So this thing right here is actually the negative sign of t. Okay, now we have two cases like I said. We can either have odd n, uh, we can either have odd n, or we can either have even n. And now, if our n is actually odd, well then we have negative this symmetric integral of sine to the nth power of t. Meaning if we plug negative t into here, that's going to give us, okay, our power is odd. Meaning we are going to get negative the sine to the nth power, okay? This thing right here is an odd integrand then over a symmetric integral, leaving us, I made a proof on that, with zero. Okay, oh, what a nice fucking notation right here. Okay, that's, uh, that's absolutely beautiful. That's a beautiful casework individual right here. <laughs> now, what happens if our n is even? Well, if you plug negative t into here, well, it's going to give us negative the sine of t to the nth power, but negative one to any even power is going to be positive. Meaning, overall, in the grand scheme of things, we are going to get Okay, this is going to pr provide us with negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. At first we have this negative sine of t, negative 1 to the nth power, 
where n is even is positive. So at first we are just going to have the sign to the nth power of t dt, but also we have an even integral this time over a symmetric integral, meaning we are going to be left with two times this integral from zero to pi over two. I hope you could follow me on everything I said right here. It's pretty damn trivial. So <laughs> nothing really to do here, seriously. It's just a little bit of casework. Okay, on the odd parts it's zero, on the even parts it's like this. Well, zero is cool. That's the um, additive identity, so nothing to do here. That's, that's a nice fucking constant, a nice solution. But what about this thing right here? Just talking about this part now. <laughs> we have up and lower from zero to pi over two. Okay, also we already have a sign to some power in here. So why the fuck not just take a look at the beta function? I want you guys to remember something. So the beta function of x, y, I'm going to put it like this, is on the one hand nothing but, okay, gamma of x times gamma of y over gamma of x plus y. On the other hand, we have already derived two integral representations of this thing. <laughs> and the funny thing is I'm creating this video before I actually re recorded those videos that I'm talking about right now. So um, that's somehow futuristic stuff right here. <laughs> I'm referencing something I haven't even done up until now. It's nothing but, okay, this is nothing but two times the integral from zero to pi over two. That's already good, two and two, zero to pi over two of, okay, the cosine of two times x minus one um, with respect to t, I'm going to put it like this, times the sine of two times y minus one integrated with respect to t. This is our better function. And I want you guys to notice that the better function of x, y is the same as the better function of y, x, because you can just switch those in the numerator and also x plus y is the same as y plus x in the real numbers. So never mind, you can also have the cosine of uh, the, the cosine to the 2y minus 1 of power times the sine to the 2x minus 1 of power. Okay, that's something you can have. Okay, we are pretty close to having exactly this right here. Where's our cosine part? Well, our cosine part is cosine to the zero of power with respect to t, okay? Something to the zero of power is just one. So, cool thing right here. And now we have to kind of express those powers that we have up here in a way that we have two as the um, coefficient of our x value, the first entry in our beta function, and also we have to have a negative one. So the easiest way to get negative one on a zero, okay, if we take a look at zero, is nothing but one minus one, okay? I hope you agree with me. If you place an apple somewhere and you take it away, then you have no apples left. But what is one? We want to drag a two to the outside. One is nothing but two times one half minus one. So we have the better function of some value comma one half or the better function of one half comma some other value. How can we express n in this way? Well, if we take a look at our n, at first let us get our negative one. So that's n plus one minus one. Now, this thing right here is going to be part of our x value in the beta function. That's the standard procedure you are going to do when dealing with the beta function. Meaning what we want to do, we want to factor out a two on this. So this is two times, okay, n plus one over two minus one. Et voila, my sons and daughters. This is beta of n plus one over two comma one half. Cool thing, right? So we have derived this stuff here before. I mean, I didn't up until now in the video, but yeah, when you watch this video, you probably already have watched it. So cool to actually end up with better of n plus one over two comma one half. Meaning by this definition that we have right here, that's going to give us gamma of um, n plus one over two times gamma of one half over gamma of, okay, it's going to be those two added together. So this is n over two plus one, okay? And gamma of one half, I don't know if I already made a video on that, probably, it's nothing but square root of pi, okay? This is just um, simple one, oh no, it's the Gaussian integral, the Gaussian integral, I'm terribly sorry. 
And with identities I have maybe derived before, I don't know. Or maybe this video is coming soon. You can even rewrite those gammas right here a little bit differently using even more case work. So this has been the first part. Now what about the second part? The sign right here. Well, just like before, we would like to introduce this substitution right here to get a symmetric integral and see what we actually get. So that's nothing but the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of, okay, this is going to give us the sign to the nth power of t plus pi over 2 dt. What is the sign of t plus pi over 2? In the normal case, our sign looks like this right here. Now we want to shift our sign pi over 2 units to the left, meaning we are going to take it and put it here. It's going to give us the cosine wave that we already had before. Meaning, we are actually going to get an integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of the cosine to the nth power of t integrated with respect to t. Here goes, once again casework, n odd and n even. You know, the real cool thing about our cosine right here is that it is indeed an even function. So the cosine of a negative t is the same as the cosine of t. Meaning, no matter if we have n even more odd up here, an even times an even function is going to result in an even function that's really, really easy to verify. Meaning, this integrand on all cases is definitely going to be even. Meaning, this is 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the cosine to the nth power of t integrated with respect to t. And by the same argument as before, and that's why I said the better function is indeed um, symmetric around those um, arguments. We can put the same stuff up here we had before. So in all cases, on this part we are going to end up with better of n plus 1 over 2 comma 1 half. Okay, so there's <laughs> nothing more we have to do here. It's really trivial. So this stuff right here is, I don't know, third grade at most. So this right here is trivial as fuck. Um, one little thing I wanted to say, yeah. Um, the cool thing is, I, here in normal case you have square root of pi, okay? Um, up here in the numerator, square root of pi should be at least irrational, okay? Um, I'm not really certain about it, but I'm no, I think by Genfold Schneider, this thing is actually irrational or transcendental. It should be irrational, never mind. This cosine of something is always going to be for even powers an irrational thing, if I'm not mistaken. Because you're always going to get this factor of square root of pi up here. Same spiel with even powers of this right here. But if, if we take a look at odd powers, for example, it's always going to be rational. So let us go through one little example because that's quite a curious fact. So um, for, for odd powers right here, you are always going to get something rational and that's pretty cool. Um, I can't really make a formal proof on that, just a little example. I, I'm pretty certain it's going to be rational for all examples. Meaning, for example, if we take a look at the integral of sine to the, I don't know, third power of x dx, okay? We are going to get, okay, this is nothing but better of 3 plus 1 over 2 is going to give us 2, 1 half, which is going to result in gamma of 2 times the gamma of 1 half, square root of pi, this thing right here, over. Now we are going to get 2 plus 1 half gamma of 2 plus 1 half. This is gamma of 5 over 2. Should be, yeah, gamma of 5 over 2. And whenever we have gamma of some integer value over 2, even negative integers, that's why I was thinking in the beginning that we could maybe also have negative integers up here. This thing is always going to be some constant c, maybe I made a video on that, that's why I said you can actually rewrite those half value gammas right here a little bit more. That's some value c 
times the square root of pi. This is always going to uh, result in some multiple of square root of pi. Meaning this and that is going to cancel out. This thing right here, gamma of two is nothing but one factorial is, is one. This is going to result in some constant. I don't want to go into too much detail what is going to result in. It should be um, 15 over eight, right? No, um, eight over 15 because you have to take the reciprocal. Don't take me by my word here. It's just a quick maths, a little observation. I guess it's eight over 15. I'm not too certain, but yeah. On odd powers, you should result in something rational. And that's something cool, in my opinion. So um, maybe you don't think that's cool, but I for myself think that's pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more better features I created, or support the channel on Patreon, click on those Quora quests I post from time to time. And up until the next video, have a, um, a better function day, I guess. See ya. Ich würde es ja lustig finden, wenn sie von allein hier dran geht und dann trinken will oder so.